Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about Cognitive Behavioral Therapy in Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. I am Dr. Suresh Bhadadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only. If you want to have a clinical opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist. Conflict of interest? None. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy in Obsessive Compulsive Disorder That is the topic I have chosen to discuss in this video. In this video, I am going to discuss the steps of cognitive behavioral therapy and also the efficacy and what are the tips a therapist should know when he is administering cognitive behavioral therapy for a person suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder. This presentation revolves around this clinical practice guideline released on 2017 by Indian Psychiatric Society and it was published in Indian Journal of Psychiatry. Along with this, Various other guidelines such as NHS UK, American Psychiatric Association advocate cognitive behavioral therapy as the first line of treatment in OCD. Unfortunately, in a country like India where clinical psychologist numbers are very less, it is less than 2000 at present who are trained in providing CBT in OCD are very less. Hence, this becomes a major rate limiting factor in providing CBT as the first line of treatment. Hence, the medication remains the first line of treatment in India. But again, in, even in medication, that is SSRIs, 40 to 60 percent may not respond. Even if they respond, may not have a complete remission. Those are the patients who require CBT. With regard to this, there was a publication done by Nimans OCD Clinic, that is, providing cognitive behavioral therapy for SSRI non-responder and it was a one-year follow-up study. In this study, it clearly said that 60% of the patient who are on CBT who did not respond to medication improved. Further, if the patient is not responding to any medication and an intensive inpatient residential therapy was done, in that 14% became remitters and 36% became responders. Though CBT is considered as a psychosocial treatment, recent biological studies have clearly said that there are brain changes which occurs secondary to CBT. Various functional imaging studies like fMRI, PET, SPECT clearly indicated that CBT decreased pathophysiological hyperactivity in classical corticostriatothalamocortical tract. In regions such as caudate, putamen nucleus, thalamus, anterior cingulate and orbitofrontal cortex. Further, the recent publication also clearly said that there is increased OCD connectivity. That means there are certain tracts the connectivity increased after CBT. The main connection involved between cerebellum and caudate and putamen, cerebellum and dorsolateral or ventrolateral prefrontal cortex and enhanced cross-networking integration both within and outside cortico striatal thalamo cortical region it clearly indicated that neural network connectivity increases was associated with CBT and if there is increased resistance to compulsion which is basically ERP. Hence my dear friend you can say cognitive behavioral therapy is a psychosocial treatment but because of this therapy there are brain changes which occurs in various parts of the brain. Let's understand what are the indications for cognitive behavioral therapy in OCD? First and the foremost, the choice. If the patient says, I would like to choose cognitive behavioral therapy and if there is a therapist available and CBT becomes the first line of treatment. In children, CBT, poor tolerance for medication, planning for pregnancy or the person is already pregnant. And if the patient says, I would like to stop medication to Prevent relapse, CBT is one of the important mainstay of treatment. Switching because of medications. We all know 30 to 40 percent of the OCD patient are prone for bipolar disorder. Giving SSRIs leads to switch. To avoid this switch, many a time cognitive behavioral therapy is indicated. Lastly, for non-response for medication, CBT is an augmenting agent and also concurrent treatment along with medication. So these are the simple indications which have been advocated in OCD. Let's understand what are the models of cognitive behavioral therapy which is advocated in OCD. 
First and the foremost, the commonest is the medical model. The medical model which clearly says that there are serotonin depletion which occurs in certain parts of the brain leads to increased thoughts. This medical model decreases the guilt, especially patient with sexual obsessions or else when the family members are highly critical that this person has become lazy and if the family members do not understand, medical model of obsessive compulsive disorder is the best way to convince the family this person is suffering from a mental illness who requires treatment either medication or cognitive behavioral therapy. However, some families may like to buy the model of cognitive model that is the person has overestimation of threat or inflated self responsibility belief about perfectionism and control and arm avoidance actually you clearly say that the thoughts are there in every person but in ocd the thoughts increases and because of increased thoughts and unable to control is considered as ocd so, you can either give a medical model or else psychological model of OCD. In India, the best way to decrease stigma, the medical model is very appealing to the public. Moving to therapy in OCD. So, there are three different types of therapy can be done. Either behavioral therapy that is only ERP or else cognitive therapy in OCD or else cognitive behavioral therapy in OCD. For theoretical discussion, BT can be considered as separate. But whenever you do BT, even cognitive changes occurs. Even when you do cognitive therapy, ERP has to be combined. Invariably, when you do therapy in OCD, invariably it will be cognitive behavioral therapy. Hence, today I am going to focus on cognitive behavioral therapy, which has both the component of behavioral therapy, that is exposure and response prevention, and cognitive therapy. I am going to make it very simple step so that any therapist can learn CBT in OCD. Let's understand what are the cognitive errors which are commonly seen in OCD. Although I am going to discuss CBT, you should know that we are going to combine both cognitive therapy and behavioral therapy to give cognitive behavioral therapy in OCD. Let's understand CT. The first and the foremost is thought action fusion. Here, the patient feels just because he got the thought, that means that thought is going to be acted upon. That is called as magical thinking. Or else, thoughts and images becomes fused into reality. That means if I get a thought, that means I am a very bad person. So, this kind of thought action fusion or else magical thinking creates huge amount of anxiety in persons with OCD. This is one of the commonest thing. Second one is inflated sense of responsibility. Here, an overinflated sense of responsibility for harm or its prevention is the main goal. For example, if I don't wash my hand, I will get infection and I, I can spread infection to everyone and I'll be responsible. That is inflated sense of responsibility. The third important this thing is perfectionism. Just right phenomena. Just right phenomena is one of the difficult to address especially in cognitive therapy or in behavioral therapy. Unless the person has insight, it is one of the biggest challenge for any therapist to deal with perfectionism. Coming to the overestimation of danger, here the person feels that he may be responsible for any danger which can occur. For example, if I did not lock my door, there will be maybe dacoity or robbery and I will be responsible for the whole thing. So, such overestimation of danger, hence the person goes and repeatedly checks whether he has locked or not. Even if they have not switched off the stove, gas stove, they feel that if they have not properly switched off the gas stove, they may feel that there will be gas leak and the cylinder may burst and the people may die and I'll be responsible for that. This is another one of the commonest overestimation of danger. The last one is need for control of thoughts. Since the thoughts are coming, in rapid in number and I am unable to control that means there is something wrong or else that thought is going to be acted upon. Hence need to control thought is one another important criteria to say that cognitive errors and cognitive control over OCD is a high problematic one which needs to be dealt. Coming to the need for certainty and all or none phenomena. Need for certainty is an unrealistic need for certainty. Even in every situation, the person needs to be clear and certain. This is one and all or none phenomena. 
This is again in OCD. If I want to wash my hand, it has to be one hour. Even if it is two minutes less, I have to redo it for one hour. Otherwise, I will do it for one hour. I will not do it for next one week. That means either I will be completely clean or else I will be completely dirty. This kind of all or none phenomena is seen in severe OCD. So these are the commonest cognitive errors seen in obsessive compulsive disorder and these need to be assessed and addressed when you are doing cognitive behavioral therapy. Let's move into various emotions seen in cognitive behavioral therapy. Anxiety is the commonest. The second one is disgust. We are disgust about sexual obsessions, disgust about the contamination, germs, guilt. I am having sexual obsessions about the family members, guilt, depression, irritability, anger, frustration. So these are the commonest emotions seen in obsessive compulsive disorder. Behaviors is repetitive behavior. We can call it as compulsion. Safety behavior. These are again, the person will avoid going to certain places, thinking that it is very dirty or else it may trigger obsession. So he will avoid looking at God's photo. If he sees God's photo, he may get sexual thoughts. Hence he will avoid. That is safety behavior, avoidance behavior, sometimes proxy compulsion. If I touch this table, I need to clean. Instead of I am doing it, I will request my family members to do it. That is proxy compulsion, switching compulsion. Many a time, the patients become tired of doing motor compulsions. During that time, they switch over to cognitive compulsions. So that means switching of compulsion. And lastly, the commonest other behavior is deliberate self-harm or suicidal attempts. So these are the various behavior which has been noted and needs to be assessed when you are doing CBT in OCD. Coming to the proper cognitive behavioral therapy in OCD. First and the foremost, please do understand. Though we call it as cognitive behavioral therapy, therapy is a training program. The reason we call it as a training program, especially in India, because the training occurs for 40 to 60 minutes. Maximum, maybe 120 minutes. That may be two hours. This is occurs in presence of a therapist. But remaining 22 hours, the patient needs to practice at home. That means it is a training for two hours, one to two hours and practicing at home. The training program is a very well is accepted by the patient. Otherwise, if you call it as cognitive behavioral therapy, the patient thinks that the doctor or the therapist will do therapy and the patient will become automatically all right. That means it will be cured. That is not the way. The training program means both the therapist and the client, the person who is suffering from OCD, needs to work together towards achieving remission. That's the training program. So training program is easily sold, easily understood by the client in India and also to the family members. Usually they are one to three sessions per week over a period of two to four months. Sometimes patient may require six months and invariably 16 to 24 sessions is considered as an adequate therapy or one course of CBT. Sometimes patient requires booster session. Invariably, any patient who can be considered as a responder to CBT is 24 to 30 sessions over a period of time. So CBT is time bound. That is around 45 to 60 minutes, one to three session per week over a period of two to four months. So please remember some of the patient, maybe around 20 to 30% may require therapy for longer duration with booster sessions. Therapist again, there are three different types of therapies. One is therapist assisted CBT or else self therapy by looking at videos, by reading books, the person can do undergo self therapy or else even computer aided cognitive behavioral therapy is also nowadays tried. Individual therapy versus group therapy. That means the patient will be individual in individual therapy or else group therapy. Five to six patients with OCD will be one with, with the one therapist and undergo cognitive behavioral therapy in a group therapy. Otherwise, the other commonest is behavioral therapy of OCD versus cognitive therapy or else combined cognitive behavioral therapy. So those are the various training program for therapies conducted. Invariably, whichever type you choose, it is invariably cognitive behavioral therapy. Although theoretically, we can discuss it is only cognitive therapy or behavioral therapy. Actually, it is cognitive behavioral therapy. 
Actually, again, I mentioned therapy is a training program. Please do keep this in mind. And when you talk to the patient, you have to insist telling that here in therapy session, we do it for one hour, the remaining 23 hours, you have time at home, you need to practice. The more you practice, the more you better you become. And if you practice 100%, 100% improvement. If you practice only 50%, that means only 50%. That means the improvement is contingent upon the patient's efforts to overcome by doing training program and implementing the homework assignments. Hence, dear friends, training program is the best way to put across to the patient and the family member. And to practice at home is the only way to go ahead for remission in OCD. Let's understand the training program. There are invariably, I said, 24 to 30 sessions. Invariably, the first session is intake session. Next two sessions will be for assessment session. Psychoeducation may be one to two session. The actual ERP exposure and response prevention will be 12 to 14, sometimes 20 sessions. Lapse prevention, two to three session. Booster sessions will be two to three sessions. So altogether, invariably, if a patient is hardworking, and does very well, 16 session is more than enough. If the patient has severe OCD, requires support, invariably 24 sessions plus 3 to 6 booster session over a period of 1 to 2 years. So this is how the therapy sessions are spread out over a period of 2 to 4 months and for booster sessions maybe 1 year. Let's go into the session number 1. Session number 1 is intake session. In this session, you are going to have a goal setting. After discussing demographic details, you will discuss about the role of therapist, role of patient and family members. Please do remember, here only you should bring in that concept of therapy is a training program and also discuss about homework assignment. And if the patient knows this is a training program and he has to put effort, he will be ready for the ERP. If you don't discuss this in the intake session, the patient will have a false concept of therapy and he feels the therapist will do everything and the patient will improve automatically just like taking medication. Hence, dear friends, bring in this training program component and also discuss about number and frequency of session, expectation and reality has to be discussed here, contact number of the therapist and if he is unable to come for therapy, he needs to inform the therapist. At the same time, if the therapist is not available, he should be able to convey to the client that on this day, the therapy is cancelled because of certain reasons. And also, to have homework assignments and what is the fee for the therapy needs to be discussed. And finally, the role of co-therapist. Co-therapist invariably in India will be the family member who will be monitoring the therapy at home. Invariably, I said one to two hours therapy occurs in, in front of the uh, therapist remaining it occurs at home at home the co-therapist is required invariably the family members are the co-therapist coming to the assessment assessment will be one to two session here you are going to assess for the diagnosis look for the comorbidity that means 60 percent of the patient will have one or the other psychiatric diagnosis assess for comorbidity do y box severity rating scale and symptom checklist and also CGI rating scale and insight. At the same time, you have to make hierarchy of symptoms, hierarchy of cues which triggers obsession and also anxiety. Look for avoidance. What are the different ways the patient is using avoidance and safety measures? Look for proxy compulsion. How the family members are helping the patient in doing compulsions. At the same time, look for what are the goals at the same time, discuss about keeping homework assignment notebook. So these are done in assessment. Moving to the third important steps is psychoeducation. Psychoeducation lasts for two to three sessions. See, my dear friends, you have to know that during the assessment and also psychoeducation, please do involve family members. To involve family members, please take concern from the patient. This is very essential because involving family members, they will be acting as a co-therapist and they also monitor implementation of CBT at home. So first in the psychoeducation, talk about medical model, discuss about neurochemical imbalance in the brain. Because of this medical model, many a time the feeling that I am not completely all right, I am having a bad character, 
I'm having sexual obsessions. Those kinds of errors can be removed by blaming this is a medical illness. Of course, it is a medical illness, but medical model of illness sales very good. So the patient will be compliant with medication and compliant with therapy. At the same time, criticism from the family members also decreases. Invariably, family members believe this person has poor character or poor weakness in the character, hence is unable to ward off these thoughts. Actually, once you say this is an illness, family members become highly compliant and they will help the patient. Discuss about the epidemiology. Symptoms of OCD can be discussed. Comorbidity can be explained to the patient and the family members. At the same time, role of family members and also proxy compulsion needs to be discussed. At the same time, discuss about role of stress. This is very essential. Invariably, patient with OCD, whenever there is a stress, for example, exams, marriage, pregnancy, the OCD symptoms worsens during stress. That needs to be highlighted. Hence, stress management do play a role very essentially in therapy. Course and outcome of CBT, role of cognitive behavioral therapy, expectation and habituation needs to be discussed in psychoeducation. And remember, I'm repeating it, involving family members helps in cognitive behavioral therapy. At the same time, discuss about marriage, pregnancy, contraception when you are doing CBT. Substance use and OCD plays a very essential role. The substance use may come in the way of CBT also. Available treatment, medication, augmentation and also duration of treatment needs to be discussed, weaning of therapy, number of sessions, how long session occurs and also homework assignments need to be discussed in psychoeducation. Moving to the expectation of treatment in response to CBT. Most of the time, the family members and the therapist will expect a straight line improvement as the patient undergoes therapy, the patient also improves. On x-axis, you look at the time and the improvement. But unfortunately, human being is not a robot. Robot will improve like this. But in human being, there will be fluctuation. For a few days, the patient will show amazing improvement and there will be sudden dip in the improvement. Again, there will be improvement. These fluctuation occurs over a period of 8 to 10 weeks and the patient shows start showing stable improvement and the plateau occurs. So, please know about the reality and you being a therapist need to expect the improvement like this if the patient shows a steady improvement you need to doubt that means there is either the patient is not doing therapy properly or else there is avoidance and is giving false improvement status to make the therapist happy that i'm improving in fact in reality the improvement occurs with fluctuation Let's understand the role of family in cognitive behavioral therapy. Please do remember, the role of family, actually many studies have clearly said that, that family, family accommodation to symptoms are very common. Means, because of the patient's OCD, family starts accommodating the compulsion by doing proxy compulsion or else doing proxy rituals. Avoidance of anxiety provoking situation even the family helps doing that and also modification of routine of the day. So these are the things the family accommodates the patient's OCD. This accommodation invariably worsens the patient. That means patient not only does compulsion by himself, he will make the family members to do proxy compulsion, proxy rituals. He will make them to avoid certain anxiety provoking stimuli. So this leads to the whole family suffers from OCD, just not the patient, the whole family suffers. We have done various studies, especially from Niman's OCD clinic. And couple of studies, Cherian et al. and the Upasana Barua et al. had clearly demonstrated doing family psychoeducation, brief family psychoeducation have found to be very useful, almost equivalent to medication, the way the family deals with the patient. These are the two important publications which are published in JAD and also psychiatric research with regard to family psychoeducation and obsessive compulsive disorder. So invariably in this uh, diagram you can see on one end there is OCD, on the other end the family members. The patient is in the middle. If the patient 
is with the OCD and the family members are fighting with the patient, invariably the OCD will win and the patient will suffer very badly. If the patient and the family members fight together against the OCD, the OCD will lose. That means we need to have a liaison with the patient and the family member to win against the OCD. It is not that patient is liaising, liaisoning with the OCD and the family members are fighting with the OCD and also patient. Invariably, it, re, it leads to severe family discord and OCD wins. Now understand what is the role of family. The family especially with regard to CBT, they will act as a co-therapist. They will monitor the implement of ERP at home. They will be supportive for ERP at home. They will be telling, reminding him, the patient that you have to do now. This is the time. This is the allotment time. This is the time you have to take. They will monitor the exposure and response prevention. They will keep a book on homework, compliance, supervised medication. At the same time, expressed emotion. If the family is very supportive, and they help the patient to fight against OCD, that means the patient will win. If the, patient, if the family members are highly critical, they are hostile towards the patient, or else they are over-involved in uh, the accommodation of OCD symptoms, that leads to poor outcome in OCD. At the same time, please educate the family members about the OCD. Involve them in the treatment, especially if you are doing cognitive behavioral therapy. This will have a good outcome in the long run. In Even in Anishcharyan study, we have done a follow-up of patients who have undergone a family therapy and they have found to be very useful and the family becomes very cooperative and both the patient and the family will fight against OCD. Let's understand about the habituation. When you start therapy, this habituation needs to be explained to the patient and the family members. Invariably, you have to show this diagram. You have to show the duration on x-axis in minutes and anxiety level on y-axis. Whenever the thought comes, the patient does compulsion, the anxiety comes down. Again, the thought comes, anxiety picks up, he does compulsion and the anxiety comes down. So that means there will be temporary relief of anxiety whenever the thought comes and he performs the compulsion. If he doesn't do compulsion, the anxiety rises, remains for longer duration and then the anxiety comes down. Depending upon the severity of the OCD, sometime these anxiety may last for one to two weeks, sometimes four weeks. And once they are able to tolerate this anxiety, the habituation occurs. That means repeated stimuli to a nerve, the response diminishes. That means repeated exposure to a thought and not performing compulsion leads to extinction of the stimuli. This is very essential in habituation. This is a scientific principle applied for nerves similar to the brain. So that means habituation is a learning principle which need to be done in cognitive behavioral therapy. You need to give certain examples for habituation, especially a patient if he is coming from the rural area, if you discuss about habituation, you will not be able to understand. Hence, you need to give an example of dark. If a patient is afraid of dark, if you put him inside a dark room, if he switches on the light, that means whenever he goes into the dark and he switches on the light, that means as soon as he enters into the darkness, he has anxiety and he will switch on the light. Here, the thought of being in dark provokes anxiety. At the same time, switching on light is equal to compulsion. That means he has not got, he is unable to get away with the anxiety of darkness. So, what he has to be done? You remove the light, put the person in the darkness after talking to him. And if he is able to tolerate the anxiety in the darkness for first one hour, two hours, the anxiety will be severe. Over a period of time, maybe 6 hours, 10 hours, the patient gets used to the darkness. That is called as habituation. Similarly, you can also talk about water. If a person is afraid of water and he does not want to go there, and he want, and he, but he wants to learn swimming. As soon as he says water, he is very afraid, he is having phobia, he is having anxiety and he may not go near the water. So what to be done? 
first what we will do is you take the person near the water maybe around 10 feet away make him to sit for some time maybe one hour two hour anxiety comes down once he is able to tolerate you move further near towards the water maybe five feet away again the anxiety will be there after some time the anxiety comes down further you will take him near the water almost one feet near the water again the anxiety picks up and if he is made to stay near the water for longer duration the anxiety comes down later he will enter into the water one feet and stays for some time and the anxiety comes down similarly over a period of time gradual exposure is done so that anxiety with his extinction occurs that is one more way of explaining the habituation similarly again about the train this is an example given for repetitive thoughts when there is no compulsion imagine you have to give an example of a train for a person whose house is next to a railway track every night at 10 o'clock 11 o'clock 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock in the night every hour there is a train every hour as the train comes near the track it makes noise if the patient starts giving importance to this train he may not get sleep at all so what he has to do he needs to ignore those thoughts do not give importance to those thoughts and he starts sleeping over a period of one to two months even the train comes he may not be able to even wake up that means his brain gets habituated to these sounds that is what is called as habituation to know the habituation the patient also learned to keep a notebook that is in diary for erp at the same time you have to prepare the patient telling that as soon as the exposure occurs the anxiety picks up so prepare them for how to deal with the anxiety if the anxiety is very severe please start benzodiazepine that will help for exposure further whenever the habituation is done the patient you need to motivate them need to acknowledge their micro gains because the patient on one day will do excellent on the other day he will be depressed he will be anxious he will not be able to do exposure so you need to repeat those examples by motivating them and the fluctuating performance is the norm in erp don't expect a straight line straight line is not normal invariably fluctuation has to be told to the family members to the patient and and the sustained effort is very essential so never have unrealistic expectation from the patient that will have heartburns both to the patient's family members and to the therapist hence habituation is very essential to be explained to the patient and the family members in cognitive behavioral therapy let's now go into exposure and response prevention proper in exposure and response prevention proper it will last for 12 to 14 session and these ERP, sometimes the therapist assisted ERP is done during the session, remaining has to be done at home. Hence, before you start ERP, a hierarchy of the severity of obsessions has to be done. Hierarchy of cues which triggers these thoughts needs to be done. And once they have done the hierarchy of these symptoms, the patient and the therapist need to go through this each symptom and the patient should choose which is very comfortable for him for exposure or exposure has to occur multiple times in a day and a notebook has to be kept for monitoring this notebook over a period of time will give the documentation how the patient started how the improvement occurred which are the symptoms the patient finds it very difficult and how much he is scoring can be seen on the daily log this is how the seven column ERP schedule is done. Look at the seven column. The first column is time at what time is supposed to do. What is the activity is the second column. Third column is time allotted. The third one is time taken. The fourth, fifth column is anxiety experienced over a visual analog scale. Zero is no anxiety. 50% is 50% anxiety, 100%. The patient can mark 50%, 60%, 70% on this visual analog scale. And number of percent of compulsion performed and any comments need to be documented here. This is the ERP activity columns which will be documented in the ERP activity scheduling book or else notebook or else you can also call it as homework assignment book. 
Many studies have clearly said that if the patient is able to carry out homework assignment religiously, that is an, one of the important predictor for outcome of CBT. If the patient does very well homework assignment, means improvement is guaranteed. If the patient does not carry out the homework assignment, the chances of improvement is very low. That means CBT is directly dependent upon the homework assignment and homework assignment performance by the patient. And this seventh column ERP activity schedule gives the documentation measures how the patient is doing and how much the anxiety is occurring. This ERP activity should be monitored by the co-therapist, that is by the family members. Here we have mentioned about the patient starts with brushing. He says if he brushes, he will have a fear of contamination. Hence at 7.30 am he goes for brushing and he says 15 minutes is enough for brushing. But in fact today he has taken 25 minutes. The amount of anxiety experienced for doing 25 minutes and the compulsion formed how much needs to be captured here as the days goes on the activities goes on adding don't remove the activity if the patient says sir i have done brushing very religiously over 10 days i want to remove it no the activity we will continue the most the mastery over each task is very essential in erp don't leave any of the activity the activity goes on adding first one was brushing has over a period of maybe two or three days or one week down the line toilet will be added bathing see although they are doing it the reason here we are adding is it is monitored with regard to time when they are supposed to do how much time how much compulsion, how much anxiety will be rated here. So you go on adding, add the task, never delete the task in, in ERP activity scheduling. This is one of the important thing you should remember. That means as the ERP activity progresses, the patient goes on adding. So over a period of time, the patient becomes mastery over all his daily activities and his life kickstarts again. ESP ERP task scheduling is very essential. Hence, charting and rating every day is very essential. Do not stop the compulsion at once. You need to discuss with the patient and the family members and the patient will say how much you will be able to do, at what time, how much time, how much quantity of water he is going to use. That has to be discussed with the patient. And the patient's motivation and patient's effort is very essential in cognitive therapy. And every time, Add the exposure task. Do not remove. Acknowledge the micro gains because ERP shows improvement with micro gains. Do not forget acknowledging the micro gains and also encouraging them. Motivation is very essential. Further, learn to bargain with the compulsion. The patient may say, I will do 10 times. And you need to bargain with the patient and the family members. Can it be 8 times or 9 times? That is the way. Similarly, exposure to time. Again, the bargain has to be done. If the patient says, I would like to take for 15 minutes, try to bargain for 12 minutes. So over a period of time, the bargaining motivation keeps the patient pushing slowly over a period of time. He can get rid of OCD. At the same time, you need to do cognitive challenging for so that the patient becomes comfortable in doing ERP. The cognitive work, what you are supposed to do. First and the foremost, I will give one example with regard to aggressive obsession. In aggressive obsession, the patient has, if I have food outside, I will have a fatal food poisoning, I may die. Or else, if the patient says, if I go outside, I may meet with an accident, I may die. So this is his thoughts. If you ask him, what is the evidence? If he says, if I go outside and I have, I will die. I may not be there. Since I am not having food outside, I am alive. So ask for the evidence. What is the worst that could happen? He may say, I may die. How likely it is going to happen? Is there any alternative less threatening explanation? What would I tell or think of another person if he were in a similar predicament or situation? Sometimes you have to do Socratic questioning. So this challenging the obsession, challenging the thought, why he is so anxious, over-inflated sense of responsibility, exaggerated threat perception needs to be challenged here. So, in such a scenario, with regard to 
fatal food poisoning. If you ask him, he say, 65% chances I may die if I have food outside. Now you need to discuss. Now you have to have a pie chart. Pie chart has to be done in front of him. You may have to say, if 100 people go outside and have food, how many of them have died? Then if every person dies, that means out of 100, one person dies, that means it is very high chance. So that means it is impossible. Invariably, even if one crore population have food outside, hardly one person dies of food poisoning. That needs to be the explanation. That means accepted risk. That means 0.0001% is the chance of death if he has food outside. So that kind of discussion has to be done and cognitive challenging has to be done and later the ERP has to be done to ask him to go and have food outside. Similarly, for if the person has aggressive obsession, if he goes outside and he may meet with an accident, this is the thought he has. Now you have to challenge this, do a Socratic questioning, and you have to ask him, if one person goes outside, what are the chances of meeting with an accident? For patient, he will say 50-50. That means if he goes outside, there is a 50% of him dying because of an accident. Now the questioning is, if 1 lakh people every day they go outside for work, do 50,000 die? No. Then you have to ask him, how many of them are going to meet with an accident? Even if they meet with accident, how many of them are going to die? So that kind of Cognitive challenging, if you are able to do, patient will start realizing that there is abnormal threat perception or else abnormal risk assessment is there. That will lead to the exposure response prevention. He becomes ready and he will start exposing himself. Imagine if the patient has only obsessions, like obsessive rumination. That means how to do ARP in such a patient? It is very difficult since he doesn't have compulsion. He doesn't have exaggerated threat perception. What should be done? In a patient who has only obsessive rumination, to deal with obsessive rumination, this is the easiest method. Ask the patient to close his eyes for 5 minutes and sit in a corner of a room. At the end of the 5 minutes, ask him how many times he thought about pink elephant. The patient says, I did not think about it. Now again, ask him to go back to the same place Sit quietly, closing his eyes, not thinking about the, about the pink elephant. Now, at the end of 5 minutes, ask him how many times he thought about pink, pink elephant. The patient will say, I had repeated thoughts of pink elephants because he was trying not to think about it. That means you are doing a paradoxical work. In such a scenario, you have to tell that this pink elephant test clearly shown that by giving importance to that thought, by indulging in that thought, by trying to stop that thought, it gives more importance and repeats many times. Hence, in such a scenario for obsessive rumination, not to give importance to that thought, do not try to stop that thought, just do your work. These thoughts will be in the background of your mind over a period of time. If you learn to ignore them, they get extinct. That is the way to deal it. And this example, pink elephant test works in many of the patient and they get clear understanding. Yes, these thoughts are unwanted, unwarranted. Since they are coming repeatedly, it does not have any significance. The presence of repetitive thoughts gives them the significance that needs to be removed. And once you do the pink elephant test, they realize this thought should not be stopped, should not be indulged should not be given time, just I need to focus on my work. That will deal about the obsession. Coming to sexual obsessions. These are very difficult to deal, especially in adolescents or else if a patient has sexual obsessions regarding family members, regarding God, religion will lead to very difficult scenario. Patient will have severe depression, self-guilt, deliberate self-harm. In such a scenario, Psychoeducation and medical model of illness plays a very crucial role. Please spend time around two to three session emphasizing that this is a medical illness. Anybody having OCD will have sexual obsession and it can happen to anybody. Telling that in typhoid everybody gets fever. Similarly in OCD if a person gets sexual obsession these kinds of thoughts are common. Once you are able to say that this is common in OCD start 
discussing about ERP and audio exposure should be planned. This has to be done after discussing doing psychoeducation, discussing about habituation and invariably try to take consent. The audio exposure requires consent of the patient. Ask the patient to list the cues under what circumstances he gets these sexual obsessions. If he is by looking at a photo, that photos can be included or else the person can clearly in detail write the complete description of sexual obsession. That script need to be discussed whether that script has compulsion. If those compulsions are written, need to be removed and a graphical description of audio exposure script has to be written. Once this is written, that needs to be recorded. Once it is recorded, the patient need to listen to this transcript once or twice or thrice a day. As he is able to listen to that, sometimes modification in the audio exposure should be done or else script to be done. At the same time, the patient may switch over from motor compulsion to cognitive compulsion. That needs to be kept in mind. Audio exposure are effective in sexual obsessions. Now you need to focus on the session progression. Feedback of a training sessions, talking to the family members, doing homework assignment, asking for how much he was compliant about the homework assignment, motivation, number of training sessions left, how many therapist assisted sessions have been done, plan about the booster session, weaning of the session has to be planned. If you are doing three sessions per week, after the patient started doing ERP, you can do one session per week. It can be translated into one session for every fortnightly. Later, one session per month. Then you can do booster session. That is weaning of session over a period of time should be planned. At the same time, relapse prevention need to be focused. That means you need to discuss during the weaning that the ERP does not end here. He has learned the ERP. The technique of doing ERP, adding of the task he has learned and he needs to inculcate ERP in day to day life. Once he has mastered, that means relapse prevention is guaranteed. At the same time, identifying the new obsessions, new compulsions, either by the patient and the family members, adding on to ERP should be planned and focused and those need to be discussed in the booster session. At the same time, need to continue medication has to be emphasized. Coming to the important uh, issue here is transferring the power to co-therapist. Once the booster session is done, the patient need to listen to the co-therapist. That is a family member who is going to monitor the ERP. He is going to add the sessions, add the task. He will be monitoring the task at home and he will be, both of them will report for the booster session. At the same time, you need to emphasize that he has learned the technique of fighting against OCD by doing ERP. The winning formula in ERP is practice, practice, practice. That needs to be, the message has to be driven to the patient and the family member. And the family member acting as a co-therapist plays a crucial role in winning against OCD. Coming to booster session, in booster session, please do follow up by box scoring. Three to six months once the booster session can be done, revise the session, add certain tasks, remove certain tasks if required, monitor the assignments, motivation, at the same time acknowledge the gain and tell that patient is doing extremely well and say that yes, he is able to overcome OCD because of his fighting power or willpower. At the same time, documentation of session is very essential. This is the session reporting form which we usually do in OCD. Session number, date, duration, time, rev revising the previous session, homework assignment, how much he has done, goals for the current session, cognitive restructuring applied, homework assignment and white box scoring. This is how we do for each session. But however, the Mental Health Care Act in the Forum B4 rule, basic medical records makes a mandate reporting session form. That is, Mental Health Care, Rights of Persons with Mental Health Rules 2018 talks about the session reporting form. Each session needs to be reported in this and kept as a documented whenever you do therapy because patient has a right to get this 
session notes. So don't forget, if you don't report these sessions in this reporting format, that is violation of Mental Health Care Act and patient has a right to have these session notes. So please document this in this therapy session notes. At the same time, my dear friends, please do know about the barrier for cognitive behavioral therapy. First and the foremost, the biggest barrier is number of qualified clinical psychologists to do cognitive behavioral therapy in OCD. That is very less. Poor insight OCD and patient refusing to do therapy, around 15% do not do. That is the second barrier to therapy. Patients wants magical cure by not putting effort. The patient feels cognitive behavioral therapy means the therapist will do, do therapy and the patient will become alright just like taking a pill. That is the third barrier. Fourth one is maintaining follow-up sessions, adherence to therapy, compliance for homework, severe anxiety, severe guilt and dropout. So invariably in CBT, 30 to 40% of them do not undergo therapy. That is because of poor insight and dropouts. So these are the barriers for cognitive behavioral therapy. With the last few words for therapist, please do remember ups and downs and fluctuating course of OCD during CBT is very common. Some days they do excellent in ARP. Some days they do not expose themselves because of severe anxiety or depression. So expect fluctuation, expect micro gains and be ready to motivate the patient because Patients are human beings. They are not like robo. They will improve every day. No, fluctuation is the norm. Do not ask the patient to stop the compulsion completely. Sit with the patient, discuss, bargain for time, bargain for the number of compulsions done, bargain for resources. If the patient is using five buckets of water, you can ask him to use three buckets. So that means bargaining for time resources, Water resources can be planned and be innovative in ERP. Watch for ethical issues, especially with regard to sexual obsessions or religious obsessions. If there are sexual obsessions with regard to family members, be careful how you are going to do audio exposure. This need to be discussed very clearly and needs to be documented if possible take consent. At the same time, family members interference, if the family members are not done the psychoeducation, if they are not involved in CBT, they may come in the way of therapy. Hence, involving the family members in CBT as a co-therapist plays a very crucial role and they do help in monitoring CBT at home. To conclude, my dear friends, cognitive behavioral therapy can be used as a first line of treatment or else can be augmented for ongoing medication. For a patient who does not respond to medication, CBT can be added. Further, for intensive residential cognitive behavioral therapy is one of the strategy used in treatment non-responsive patients. At the same time, please do remember, cognitive behavioral therapy training program brings in various changes in various parts of the brain. That means CBT brings in biological changes in the brain. At the same time, please don't forget Cognitive behavioral therapy is not, not just a therapy, it's a training program in India. That means you need to train the patient for one hour in the session, remaining he has to practice at home. The more he practice, the more he is going to improve. At the same time, one of the best indicators for improvement, when, improvement with CBT is homework compliance. If the patient homework compliance is very good, that means the patient is going to improve. So, thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.